Now let's start animating the different parts of this bird. So let's select the main body, blob and all the IK targets and move them up until they are above the ground. This could work for now. First let's start with the claws. And to animate the claws we should make a pass. So shift S, cursor toward origin, then shift A in the curve at a circle. Now we can press the forward slash key to isolate the circle curve. Then go into side view, press R, Y, 90. Then we can press tab to go into edit mode. And what we are going to do is something like this. We should find a way to make a straight connection between these two vertices, not a curve like this. But if now we select this bottom vertex, press X and delete it, we have something like this, which is not what we expected. So to do that, we can select these two vertices Press V and set their handle type on vector. Now if we select this bottom vertex, press X and delete, this is what we want. And then we can select this vertex, this handle, rotate it until we have a better curve. Yeah, this is much better now. Then for further adjustment, we can go into object mode and we should definitely increase the scale of it. So, so let's use the dimensions X 3.7 and Y on 20. This we can't say anything about it until we exit the isolation mode and yeah, this could work. But here is a catch. If we take a closer look, we can see that this curve is pretty jaggy. And to make it smoother, we can go to the curve data panel and here we can see the resolution preview. And if we increase that, for example, if we set it on 40, it will be a smoother. You can go higher, but this will work anyway. Now to actually make this class to have a movement like this pass, meaning they start from here, from this side of the pass, they go up, which means they are going forward and then they go back to their starting position. So let's start with the right arm IK target, select it, then go to the constraint panel and here give it the follow pass constraint. And for the target, as you already know, choose our curve. And since we have added this follow pass constraint, our arm is pretty dislocated. To fix that, we can simply eyeball it and move it into place. Why is it moving so fast? Anyway, we can hold down the shift key. I guess there's a problem here. And then we should rotate it and move. No, there's absolutely a problem. And maybe that's because we have scaled up the curve in the objects mode and we didn't apply the scale. So press Ctrl A to apply the scale. Yeah, now it is working properly. So let me press Alt R and rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. You can hold down the Ctrl key to be precise or you can do it from here. And then to be sure, set the rotation of the other axis on zero. Then to make it more natural, I mean, when the cloud reaches the ground, it is supposed to be open. So select the armature Ctrl tab to go into pose mode and press Rx, we should rotate it on its local x-axis. So set the transform orientations on local. Rx and open the claw. And do the same thing with the second bone. Now select the IK target, move it up and put it exactly on the ground. Yeah, this seems pretty fine. And let me move it a little bit. Now to animate this arm the way that it follows the curve, we can take advantage of the offset property. And if I am not, we should go backward on the offset in order to make the arm go forward. So using this offset property is like this. If we set it on 100 or minus 100, it means an entire round. Here on the first frame, make a keyframe for the offset property. Then how long should it take? Let's go to frame 16 and then set the offset on minus 50, which means half of the way. Make another keyframe. The gap between the first and the second keyframes are 16 frames. So for the third keyframe, we go to frame 32 and set the offset on minus 100 and another keyframe. Now let's play and see what we have. But here is a catch. The animation ends after the third keyframe. So to fix that, 
In the timeline, press A to select all the keyframes, then press Shift E to open the set F curve extrapolation and set them on linear extrapolation. Now, if you play the linear extrapolation for the keyframes, keeps the animation going even after the timeline ends so that we won't have to copy the keyframes a bunch of times. The next step is to animate the claw itself. So select the armature and go into pose mode. Select the first bone. So right click on the X rotation, insert a single keyframe and do the same thing with the second bone. Then let's move forward a little bit. I guess we should go frame by frame somewhere around here select the first bone and if we enable the rotation tool we will have a much easier life then we can close the claw also this one seems fine and make keyframes for both of them again we can go forward and close it even more let's take a look at what we have yeah this seems nice then we can go to somewhere around here and I guess it would be nice to keep their position in the same place for a few seconds, for a few frames. Select the last keyframe, Shift E to duplicate and move it forward. Also for this one, then let's go to frame 60. And now we can use the same keyframes. So this was on frame 3, Shift D, duplicate and move it forward. It should be, I guess, if I... If we want to be pretty precise, we should set it on frame 14. Then let's go to frame 60 and duplicate the first one and move it here. We should do the same thing with this one. Yeah, it looks really fine. And if you ask me, spend a little bit of more time and make a more realistic animation. Because now you know how it works and you can do anything that you like. We should make another keyframe for the bones when they reach the beginning of the pass. So here, frame 32, we don't have to do anything except for duplicate the last keyframe and move it to frame 32. It is working properly, but again, there is the same catch here. The bones animation ends after the last keyframe. And to quickly fix that, open a new window here and switch it to the powerful graph editor. Select the axis that has been animated and here, and here, if you don't have the side menu open, press N to open it. Go to modifiers and give it the cycles modifier. And we don't have to do anything for that. Do the same thing with this bone. Let's take a look now. Yeah, it is working pretty fine. Now what we should do is to do the exact same thing for the left arm. But there is something here that I have to definitely mention. Select the left arm IK target and give it the follow pass constraint. For the target, choose the curve, rotate it to make it face down, then we can move it down. Make a keyframe for that, go to frame 60, set it on minus 50, make a keyframe, go to frame 32, set it on minus 100, make another keyframe. So now if we play, we have something like this which is not what we are looking for. So to give them some variation, select all the keyframes of the left arm and move the keyframes until the first keyframe is at the CTI. I mean, the last location of the second keyframe. Now we have something like this. This is much better. Then just simply animate the armature of the left arm exactly like the right one. Now, if we take a look at our animation, this is what we have, which is really cool. I really like that. Yeah, but yet we cannot say anything until we animate the main body. This is going to make the animation much better. So select it and go to the first frame. Then press K to make a keyframe for both location and rotation. And we actually don't need to make any more keyframes for it because we are going to use the graph editor to make some random movement for it. So extend the graph editor and here we can see our keyframes. First, let's take care of the most important one, which is the Z location and enable normalize to have a better look. Then in the modifiers, give it the noise modifier. Now if we play, it is a little psychotic. So we should add just the noise modifier. So let's increase the scale to yeah, 46. And then we can also increase the strength to make the effect more visible. Now let's play. 
and wait a little bit because we are also going to give the same remedy to the other axes. And let's give the face a large random number so that the different axes won't have the same pattern of movement. We can also give it another modifier as well. So let's give it the built-in function. This is going to get really fun. So let's decrease the phase multiplier 0.4 maybe. Increase the phase offset a little bit. But now as you already guessed, we should do something here. We should enable the additive property so that this built-in function modifier won't take place of the main animation, but instead it adds another layer of animation which makes the whole process much more alive. So if we enable that and play, you can see what it does. If I turn it off, this is what the noise modifiers do and this is with the built-in function. I'll just take a look at this feather tail. I really like that. And it is going to get even better. Then for the other axes, we can just simply copy this modifier. Now we can select the X location and paste the modifier. And for this one, we don't actually need the built-in function. The numbers are fine and just give the face a large random number. Let's take a look. You see it also moves on the X axis. Let's copy it again and paste it on the Y location. Give it a random phase number. Let's play. It's getting better. At, oh, it is going forward and backward. And I want it to go forward and backward more. So we can increase the strength of it. Let's set it on 6. Uh-huh, this is better. And we can decrease the scale. 24. Ooh, look at this. Let's copy it and paste it on the X rotation. Look at that. The scale is fine, but the strength is too much. And just paste the same thing and give it a different face. And just copy and paste it to the other rotation axis. So this is what we have. Yeah, looks really fun. Just look at the movement of this arm. And now we should animate this big boy, which is the easiest one actually. So go to the first frame and press K. Make a keyframe for location and rotation. Let's again go with the Z location, give it the noise. And what numbers did I use? I guess it was 75, just to save some time. A strength on 12, give it a large phase number. Just take a look at this. And, also, and we can also give the Z location, like the main body, a built-in function. Enable additive amplitude 0.2, phase 0.4. And this one, I guess it was minus 6.7. Enable additive finally. Let's play. Seems like that this arm is adding some pressure to this main body. So now what we should do is just copy it and paste it to the other axis. And delete the built-in function, give it a different face and do the exact same thing. It seems like it has a mind of its own. And then since the modifiers that we add, it's just another layer of animation. We can actually go forward to here, select the IK target and move it or rotate it and then make another keyframe. Let's move it forward and play. So I added a few keyframes and now let's play it. Yeah. If it isn't cool, then what it is? And by the way, you can select the armature and make animation for that also. You can use the same modifiers or just simply add some random keyframes. And it is up to you. Now let's take care of this blob. So go to frame 1, make a keyframe for location and rotation. And we can actually use the same modifier that we did for the main body. So we can copy that and paste it here. Numbers are fine. We can give it a little bit of offset. Random phase for the Z location. We can again give it the built-in function. Enable additive, a little bit of adjustments. It is totally up to you and give it anything that you like. 
it is up to you but adjust it the way that it doesn't intersect with the feather as you can see here it is easier than it looks now just do the same thing with the other axes let's take a look yeah this is really nice then if you like you can do the exact same thing for the light blob now this is what we have cool huh <laughs> So that was the animation part, like always fun. And the next step is to make a ground plane and a backdrop for this robotic burn and then spreading some droplets all over it using the geometry node. 